can. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see that? I'll make it bigger here in a second. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're ready to go. Let's see if you can. We're good. Yeah, we're good. And we see, I see your, your screen. Okay. Awesome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm excited to be here and um, talk to you guys about strategies you can use with Facebook. Um, I want to tell you, whoops, we're going the wrong direction. I want to tell you a little bit of, this is going to be a little bit interactive. So feel free to get a notebook um, to write some notes as I go through this. Cause I like to, I, I am the type of person and coach who will always help you take action. So you can start making moves and seeing results. Um, so I'm excited to share with you guys. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory on like how this all came about. So this all makes great sense for you because I know a lot of people out there in the world are talking about how Facebook is dead for business and these groups are annoying and like all the things. So I want to help you like work through all of this because they are actually gold mines if you run them properly, which is what I want to help you do. So 13 years ago this week, to be exact, I started my first business, um, which is so crazy. It feels like it just flew by. And the <laughs> y'all are probably going to know exactly what I'm about to tell you. But like one of the first things I was told, and mind you, I was watching her post week after week after week on Facebook, she was posting the same exact story about how she was working on her health. She was getting paid to do it. She was doing it around the kids um, schedule. And I remember like it would be payday and she was like, we're going shopping. And I'd be like, what is this? What is she doing? And she, and the reason, the way that I met her was she dropped me the most obnoxious hey girl message you could ever get. Like it was a novel long. It had all the links. It was everything you would block. You would run, you would scream. You'd be like, what? like, get out of my inbox. And instead of me doing that, I was like, what is this person real? Like, is this a robot? Like it was very robotic. And I was like, okay, let me just follow. Cause like, this is so fascinating. Like, why would someone send me this kind of crazy note? So eight months of me watching and deciding like, should I do this? Is this a scam? Is this like a real thing she's talking about? But she consistently told the same story week after week after week. And I was like, okay, nobody posts like this every single week. And is, it's not real. Like it has to be real. They, If it was fake, they would not be doing this like for months on end. So when you guys are sharing out there, um, take note that like people take time, especially in 2024, people are vetting us. They're watching. They're like, is this real? Like I've been, I've bought a bunch of products. I've been a part of things and like, it did not work out. And so you have to stay so consistent with your story. So I just want to preface that because that's how she got me in. And that was years ago. Um, I was like that thinking that way, like, is this for real? Is she, you know, I was thinking that way years ago. So people are thinking that way. Um, so you want to be really consistent with your story. But anyways, I finally was like, okay, tell me what to do and I'll do it. I want to do whatever you're doing. Cause I was so intrigued. I wanted a different life. Um, at that point I did not have my twin boys who are here in this photo. Um, I was on the um, I was just like six months out of facing the fact that I was going to be in an infertility journey, which is what drew me over here. Um, and I hadn't hit that point yet, but it was coming and I got started and you know what they told me to do? Send a hundred messages, get the word out. And I was like, okay, yeah, I need to get the word out. Like I got you. Um, but I don't like the way you, I don't like this approach. And I, I'm guessing most of you are like, I don't really, I want to get the word out, but I, this is awkward and uncomfortable. And the thing that like drives me crazy about that approach, you know, there's a right way to do that. But the thing that drives me crazy is that we have great products. We have great opportunities. There's so much great stuff and it gets missed because of the approach that people take. So what I did was 
I opened up a Facebook group and I was like, let's try it. Let's try something a little different than me just like cold messaging all these people. Let's just approach this differently and just see, let's see what happens. And um, I will tell you, I was the girl who brought the whole friends list into my group. Not saying that's a great idea, but um, I did do that. And I was like, if this isn't for you, you could just leave the group. It's fine. <laughs> um, so I don't recommend that, but I definitely did that. So as I did this, as I started this community, I started sharing that uh, tips that could serve them. Okay. And like through that, I felt very confident turning around and then talking to them about whatever it was that I was offering. And what I found was as I was um, doing this, I started recruiting to my team and they were duplicating this process. They were setting up the group. They were developing how they wanted it to be. They were growing it and they were getting customers and they were growing their team. And for those of you who come from the old spot, this is literally how every single one of my diamonds were developed. It, uh, looking back on it, I was like, whoa, like literally every single one of them who worked with me, Diamond Star Diamonds, they followed this method and they saw a lot of success consistently over time by doing this very simple thing. And so um, I ended up selling, you know, thousands of dollars in stuff and products. I've, you know, sold course, this course now, and I've helped people that are um, realtors, course creators, coaches. I work with other network marketers on this as well. And they've all really saw awesome success by implementing these very simple things. And so I'm excited to like share this with you guys. Um, so that's a little bit of the backstory on how we got here. Um, and I will tell you, like, I just got the courage to like really start sharing this last year as a program to help people. Uh, I was very shy to share it because I thought, I don't know. So here we are and it's been doing amazing things. So I'm ready. Hope you're ready. First things first is like, why Facebook, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, Facebook. Oh, I'm over that app. I'm over that. I want to go to Instagram. I want to go over here. I want to tell you some stats. Facebook, 1.8 billion people are using Facebook groups every day. That is the size of a country. These groups are active. People are in them. And you have so much opportunity to go connect and make, um, you know, generate new leads to your own community. And so just take that in and note that like this app, this um, platform, 1.2 billion made a purchase on Facebook. And of those 1.2 billion, 66% made their most recent purchase on Facebook. So the main platform that's still rocking it out is Facebook over all of them. Um, I just want you to take note of that as we go into this. So let's talk about a group and what it can do for your business. The first thing is it's going to attract in your dream clients and potential teammates. And here is why. If you title your group very specifically for what it is that you are doing inside of that group, when people are searching on Facebook, they're going to find your group. And they're going to want to join your group because they want to know what you're talking about. They want to hear from you. So think about it like this. We have gut health, hormone health. We got people who care about um, intermittent fasting. We've got this carnivore diet. I don't know if y'all heard about that. I've heard about it. Um, and if you search those groups, they're very specific. They're separate. Some of them are like hormone health for women in her 40s. Or it's like um, gut health for a certain person, for moms or whatever. Like you can see how it gets very specific. And so what happens is people go in because they're like, oh, I care about my gut health. No, I want to learn about hormone health. Like it's so specific that right away it's doing a search or a sort for you, right? So the people who could care less about um, gut health aren't going to join that gut health community. Maybe they're 20, like they're not going to join that community because it's not for their age. So that helps you kind of sort things out when it comes to your time, right? Because your time is really important and you don't want to waste your time on people who have no interest in what it is that you're talking about. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that 
It allows you to engage and build trust with your potential dream clients who are now inside of this community, right? So we have them inside of the community. We have the ability to really engage and build trust with them. And I'm, I'm not opposed to other platforms. I have no problem with them. I use them, but there's something nice. Um, like I have here at number four, where it's like, they see your stuff, they see your post. You're not like, you know, battling with, um, many other people in their posts, like they're there for you. They've come into the community to learn from you. They want to be in that space because they know it's yours. They know the topics you're going to be talking about, right? And so now you have that time for you to really build that trust and build that engagement and connection with them. And what I'll also add, I put here as a little bonus, is the current clients. So as this goes, this is a consistency over time thing. Well, you know, business is that way. But what happens is the people who are using the products already, like let's say Jamie's in my group and I put out a post about hydrate detox and I'm talking about something and she comes on and she's like, this stuff has been, so, or, or let's talk about collagen. That's about, I like, I like Jamie's collagen hair story. And she's like, my hair was thin and I was losing it and yada, yada, yada. And she comes on and she types on a post that I've created that creates social proof. So like, think about Amazon and how we go on there and we're like, which one do I want? Which reviews? Oh, this one's higher reviews. Oh, oh, they're writing all good stuff. Okay, we want to go with this. So it creates a social proof from the people who've already joined you um, when they come on and comment. And it's it's not like hundreds of comments overnight. It's not like, you know, it's a couple of them that's enough for people to be like, okay, if it worked for them, maybe I should really do that. Because that's a big piece that people look for is that social proof, which is why we share testimonials why we want stories from people, why we want to be sharing that stuff out that's um, beyond our own story, right? Number three, it creates a community in general, right? So um, I'm going to talk about this just in a second, but like if you guys have been a part of some of these groups and you're like, all they do is promote and it's disgusting and it's icky and it's growth and I'm so annoyed by these groups, like that's not what I do. I teach you how to like literally create community which part of your job in that, there's a lot of less pressure when you do something like this because you facilitate it through what your content is. And I'm going to get into this here in a second. And it allows others to build the connection and to comment and to engage, which takes pressure off of you to feel like I need to constantly be out there talking and glued to my phone because like you don't. Okay. Um, okay. We talked about your post being seen. Uh, you can get the message across to everybody, which is the whole point. You have a specific message you're here to share. That's part of this company. That is your belief. That is what you stand for. That may be the, a very specific product. It, it, that can look different for all of us. Um, but your message gets across to everybody because it's seen in the groups. And then number six, I know this can be a sensitive one for some of us who have come over from running challenge groups. But it can be a great way to create a customer experience for once they've purchased. If you want to bring them into a space where you work a little bit more exclusively with them, totally up to you. It's an option. It works, um, but you don't have to. I'll just leave that like that. Okay, moving along. All right, my first question to you is, do you have a Facebook group community? Have you set one up? Let me know. Let me know in the comments or in the chat thread. And I'm gonna walk you through the difference between an info group and a community because this has been a really big question. Somewhere out there in the world of this industry is this VIP like thing, okay? I have a VIP group and like you go into these groups, like I audit groups, that's something that I do. And I'll go in and it's like 500 different colors of their nails, you know, they're selling. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's just nonstop sales. And it's like, no wonder nobody's engaging. No wonder nobody's like, people are leaving. <laughs> like all you're doing is selling to them. Okay. And so there is a time and a space for that. And this is important for this group specifically, because many of you already have really warm and hot networks of people who are like, just tell me more about this stuff. I know you, I like you and I trust you. I just need to know what you got going on. Like, what is this? So that's where your info group comes in. Okay. So that's like your hot audience. They know you, they like you, they trust you. They're like, just tell me what you're doing. And so yes, having a hub with like that information, which if you guys are in my group. That's what that looks like. Just because I'm literally 
only in my third month here. And so I still have a very warm network, hot network of people who already know me, like me, trust me, and are just like studying and learning and figuring out if this stuff is for them. Um, now a community is going to be for your cold audience. Cause eventually if you haven't already, you're going to want to tap into a cold audience. That's how we build a business. We're going to need to network. We're going to need to connect with people who don't know us yet. So the community is the place where you're going to build that no like, and trust factor. And then if you want to move them to the information, you can, if you want to talk to them in a private message about in information, I mean, whatever way works for you. Some of us are getting them on phone calls, lots of options that you guys get to work with. And I say, do what feels good to you. Okay. Jen says, not yet. I'm excited. Jamie's transitioning. That's what I'm kind of doing too. So like when, because we came from like, you know, we have these networks where it was like, you knew people were just going to want the info. Like it's all, it looks a little different because we've got a lot of people that know like can trust us. So now, as we start to like um, smooth that out, I think is the word, we want to start to transition that into a community because we do want to start to bring in cold market who are like, who is this girl? Like, what is she talking about? I'm really intrigued by hormone health, but I need to like vet her. I need to vet this. I need to look at all this stuff because that's what they're doing. Remember what I did? Even years ago, I was vetting her like crazy because I was like, is she out of her mind? She just sent me this crazy message. She's posting this vision that I would love to have. I came from the corporate space, went to college, like did all those things. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to like live this kind of lifestyle. This, I was commuting two hours a day. It was just insane. And I was like, how did, how do I do this? Like, there's no time left in the day. And I knew I needed to do something different, but I didn't know what. And here this girl was like painting this picture of a vision week after week. And that's what built my trust is she was consistent with her story. So write that down. That's a big, important thing for you to know. Um, Nicole says, I feel like mine is more of an info group. Okay. Let's walk through, let's walk through some of this and, um, let's hopefully help you guys, um, with a content plan. Okay. So we all think about content in the big space, right? Like out in public. And it's important. That's important because so the way that I look at all of this is I'm sharing and then I'm pointing them to the group. I'm posting and I'm sharing and I'm pointing them to the group. So what I'll do is I will share a story or I'll talk about, you know, where we're at in the team or I'll talk about like a product. And then on, on the um, comments of the post, I'll say more info, join the group. And I point them to the community because that's where I can really get to know them and they can get to know me. We know how Facebook works. We know how Instagram works. We follow someone new. We're like, oh, this would be someone so great. And then the next day we're like, who was that person? Unless we're like really on top of our tracking. Um, even with the flagging and stuff, I still, me and Instagram, like I'm not always that great with the tracking. And so for me, moving them into one space is very streamlined and helps. So let's talk about a content plan. So inside, we're going to talk about inside. Outside, your goal is to roll them into your community Think of this as like your social media email list. The email list is like your back end. This is like your front end. Cause yes, I know social media can go away. So I'll talk to you a little bit about how to like move them into the back end as well. Cause I like to capture both sides. Um, so the first thing is let's talk about content plans. So the first thing I want you to do is go live once a week in your group. Okay. That'll help them get to know you. And you might be like, what am I doing inside? What am I saying? Here's the thing. There's two different lives that you can do. One is like, I was, I, I was on this call and I learned like today, today, let me give you an example. So today I'm learning a lot about hydrate and detox, um, and the detox part of it. And I'm like, Whoa, this is really fascinating because I have some ladies that are experiencing the detox. And so I could pop on live. It's not planned. It's not professional. I could have just worked out all sweaty and been like, let me tell you about detox and symptoms or something, something simple. Or I could have been reading a book and I was like, wow, this is so like, it's giving me something that I want to tell people. You kind of like go on your stories and do this, right? You'll be like, I was reading this book and I want to talk about like this. And you're, you're just walking in the neighborhood or you're out doing something and you just want to pop on for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And you just want to tell them. So that's your 
unplanned, just pop up live, just share a little something with them. Because while yes, stories are still there and they're watching, not everybody's always got the time to be clicking and watching but they are paying attention in the group because they're in there constantly, whether they see it later or whether they see it right when you're live, they're watching. I will get messages like, I saw your live. Um, even though I see like no interaction, sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like they're watching. So number one, go live. Number two, create niche and non-niche related conversations um, posts. And I, I go into a little bit of this here in a little bit, but what I mean by this is like, I want you to build some harmony in your communities. And by that, I mean, you can look at like what's going on in the world, look at like what's going on. Like we just had a holiday pass where you could have been like, what's your favorite Easter candy? Like it's so basic, but it builds the connection with these guys. Like these tiny little things are important. And so that's your non-niche, that's your relationship building. That's your, um, the most basic questions you can ask that will get them talking. Cause you guys are probably posting product or something and they're, it's like crickets, right. Or you're like, where's everybody, you know? And that's just because it's just how it goes. Like, it's okay. They're watching and that's all that matters. So that is where the niche piece comes in is like, when you do want to educate, when you do want to create some kind of thing and you want to share with them, or maybe like today, as I'm learning more and more about the hydrate detox and some of this detox stuff that these guys could be feeling, I could come in and I could create a conversation around this and be like, have you ever felt, you know, headache or the stomach or whatever they're feeling? And that's more specific to the hormone health conversation, right? So you guys see how like creative you can get with your conversation starters. Um, asking them questions can always be a really great thing as well because they'll come in and they'll respond. One of the things that I loved doing in the nutrition space was just like, um, where's your biggest struggle with nutrition, right? Like those are one of the easiest things. You guys may do that on your stories now, do it in your group. Like, where's their struggle with whatever it is you want to support them? And, and, and I know Jamie's getting ready to do a sleep study. So if I were her, I'd be learning, getting some research on where they're struggling with the sleep so she can come in and like support them. And that can lead to potential teammate and a potential client, like whatever direction she wants to go with that. It works its way. It's a customer journey, um, if you will. So that's number two. Um Number three, probably the most important thing you could do if you're going to take anything away from this is going to be your story. Your story is going to sell all day long, hands down. Your product story and your business story, they are different. So think about them in different posts that you can share. You have a very different business story than you do product, right? And sometimes I try to marry the two together. And the next thing I know, I'm writing like this massive novel. I'm like, is anyone going to actually read this? This is a lot. So sometimes it's like, can we break it down, make it more digestible for people to really connect the dots? But your story is going to be the way. Like when she told that story over and over and over and over, like a, mach a repetitive machine, she got me into her team. And like, I built a massive, massive business. And so don't forget that part. Okay. Number four, create an event or a challenge. So this is a little bit more professional. This is, we're setting up an event in the page. We're doing a sleep study. We're doing a, I think there's a book club going on. We're doing, um, um, there's some other like events that are happening. Think about a challenge you could create. So let me just break that down. An event is something like this. We're, we're together. We're here for maybe an hour. It's one time on the back end of it. I am going to intentionally tell you about um, Hugh and Grace, right? So if you're doing the sleep study, if she, if Jamie were to do like one event around the sleep study and it's just one day, then the intention would be for her to make sure that on the back end, they know about her opportunity, about her product, right? In the case of a challenge, don't go past five days, you'll lose everybody. But 
if you can get them a little bit of a mini transformation, and I'm, I'm like thinking of examples of how to go about doing this for us, it was like, um, water and like, even in the sleep study that could almost be like giving them some things and seeing how their sleep goes throughout the week. And, and like through doing that, talking to them about, you know, the products, right. And so you can do this paid or free, whatever floats your boat. Um, but you can get really creative because we have so many products to work with, like the house cleaning, you could have them try the products they're using and then try yours. And you could do something around the spring cleaning campaign like that. Um, lots of, lots of things you can do there. Okay. Number five, I want you to consider the features in your group. You have albums, you have files, you have guides, you have featured posts. So albums, I love to put testimonials in albums because what do people do? They snoop, they're looking, they're searching. They're like, so if you create an album that's specific to collagen and you post all these testimonials, I've, we've got Jace over in the team who's starting to collect testimonials for us. If you put that all in an album, and you break it up, what happens? Like that's creating more social proof that's showing them like, oh, wow. Like some of the skincare results that are being shared help them to be like, oh, I should really try this, right? So um, albums also, everyone who's going to Hawaii next week could create an album around that trip. Tell a little bit of a story inside of your community. You can totally do it on your public page too. Um, but take advantage of the albums in your group. The featured posts are key if you do a really important live video. Like when I did my story, my story, going back to your storytelling, I pin that to the top as a featured post because what happens is I still have people joining the group today. So I open the group in January and we're in April and people are still coming in right? So I want to be able to have them see that featured post and not have it way down where they're no longer searching in the, in the, in the little group feed guides. You can organize everything file, like same thing. You can upload files that may be really important for them to review some information. Okay. Okay. That was a lot to start. Do you guys have any questions so far? Mine is an info group. How do you guys feel so far? That was a lot. <laughs> This is great. Thank you. I love it. Okay, good. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and I will answer for you. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. When you say like an event, would that be like kind of like our Homeward Harmony events, but like it would be within your Facebook group? Yeah. So, um, exactly what you're doing when you guys bring them on to it. So they can totally come onto a zoom. It's, it's, they don't, it doesn't have to be a live per se. Like it totally can be, but I've definitely like, especially if you have slides, you got to bring them onto a zoom, right? So you can bring them onto a zoom, um, and do hormone harmony, set it up as an event, exactly like you've been doing. And then what you're doing, you know, like big marketing picture is you guys are driving people to this event, right? So if you're doing a business opportunity, you're driving them and you're talking to people about your business opportunity. Cause when you do the event, you want people there. Right. So we want to, um, like that makes sense. The answer to that. Okay. Um, next. Okay. Okay. This is the bonus tip. And I wrote, dare I say the secret formula, um, your content is going to create the conversations, which is going to create your conversions. Okay. So everything, um, is going to get these people talking to you and, or you talking to them either way, because here's what happens. They come into your community, you start to build this connection. And I'm going to walk through a little bit of that in more depth here in a minute. And that creates conversations and conversations are how you're going to build this business. Like period, relationships, conversations, that is where the conversion is going to come from. We are not in the space of like, yes, maybe you can put up some posts and like, maybe someone's going to sign up right away. It's possible, but like, that's not a good um, strategy to hold on to. It's important that you are okay with having these conversations, whether they're on the phone, they're on a Zoom, they're on DM, 
voice note, text, whatever that looks like. And the whole magic in all of this process is um, implementing this consistently. And I want to just note, this does not take a whole lot of time. I, when I was doing this, I literally gave birth to twins, um, after going through an infertility journey and they were in the NICU, like it was a whole ordeal for me. And it was a lot that was, I think I had not had an assistant yet at that point. Um, I was just like figuring it out was very new and fresh, but thank God I had done this and created this community because all I had to do was create a piece of like a post that would help some interaction, start some conversations. And through that each week, I'd start to see the sales and they'd start to pick up over time because I kind of ran this like a machine <laughs> that sounds really business boring, but it was like that basic. Cause I was like consistently bringing in new people, creating conversations through my content. And then I was converting them Right. And it was just like rinse and repeat. And that's how it was so duplicatable. It was just like so basic. Um, okay, let me see here. System darky. Yes, it was a great system. But what was funny is I didn't realize this was a system until I had hit like elite. <laughs> and I had a coach be like, You realize you have a system? And I was like, What? <laughs> it was really wild how I did not intentionally fully know what I was doing. Um, but now I do. So, anyways, okay. All right. How do you guys feel about engagement in your community? Are you, is it good? Is it quiet? Does it drive you crazy? Do you care? I'm curious how you guys feel about this. I get like tons of people get, get so frustrated about this topic and quiet. Okay. So I want you guys to plan some live videos. You don't even have to plan them. Just like go with the flow too. Cause sometimes you just want to pop up and talk to people, right? Do you ever just want to go to your stories and like tell something about something, whether it's business or whether it's personal. Um, I want you guys to start to integrate some more personal, some more human conversation with these guys in the group and see if you start to see a little bit of conversation pop back at you. Um, it can be very simple stuff and let it be, um, no agenda to the business. Let your, let just build the, the trust with these guys, build the connection and let's see what happens with your engagement, but also don't let the quietness stop you. Cause they are watching they're reading and, you know, vetting, if you will, they're taking their sweet time to determine if this is what they'd like to be a part of. Okay. So um, don't let that derail you. Okay, private conversations with no agenda. I want you to get to know these members as you grow this community. So what I want you to do is reach out to 10 or so a couple times a week. This is like, we come from a space where it was like every day, do this, da, 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 da. and like, yeah, I can sit here and tell you if you have five conversations going every single day, you're going to see success because as long as you can move them into becoming a client, which Jamie is bringing that topic of closing coming up here soon for you guys, um, we want to be able to move them into yes or no, like that is important. But I also think like, if you only have two or three days to do this, just reach out to 10 people and ask some questions, build a relationship with them and engage with their page. Don't ask, um, don't have an agenda for your business. Just be their friend. Just get to know them. Just connect a little bit and don't let it suck too much of your time. This should not take you more than an hour. Um, look up a So here's an action tip for you. Go into your groups, look up a couple of the members to connect with today. Like, what are you doing this weekend? Just very simple. I know sometimes this can feel like this is like, weird talk, Lindsay, but like, just, just act like you're going to coffee with them because people want to be seen and heard. And the more like they know you and trust you, the more opportunity you have to really serve them and help them with your products and your business opportunity. Okay. Now conversation starters made simple that lead to your business and your products. So this, this is like a twofold thing. And what I want to also say is let this be kind of your intuition. 
Okay. Meaning there's going to be some that are going to interact. There's going to be some that you're going to feel good about talking about your business pretty quickly. They may already know you. They may like you. They may have, you may have already talked to them in the past and you're like, Oh, let me catch up with you type of thing. Like you have, you'll know, like, I'm not going to be able to give you the exacts on that. Cause it's, there's definitely an intuitive knowing of like, this person just came out of nowhere. Right. And they may be dropping you a question or they may be someone in your group that you're like, wow, I've never, I have no idea who this person is. I should you know, let them know that I see them here and, and welcome them to my group. So one thing that you can do is create three questions. That is what Facebook allows you to do for your group. And you can ask very specific questions that will lead you to these conversations. So, um, one of them can be along the lines of like, I have a newsletter. I'd love for you to be a part of her. If you'd like tips on hormone health or skin or whatever you're focused on, drop your email and they will, they will drop their email for you and you will start to build your list on the back end, which is important. So you can create a question like that too. If you already have these groups and you're like, oops, I want their emails. All you have to do is create some content that has them giving you their email, right? Like maybe you're creating a free little something for them, a little like swaps guide, like how to start the swaps or how to not be overwhelmed. I realize this can, you may not have the capacity to do this right now. So just put this to the side. Don't let this be like, don't let this hold you back from starting your group. Cause I did not start my email list. Oh gosh. I think it was like five years in until I really started it. Um, I encourage you to get it started, but don't let it hinder you either. Okay. Second question. I, I ask where they found me. Cause I always want to know like where these guys are coming from. Um, you don't have to ask that, but if you, if you're curious, you can totally ask, um, where they found you. And then the third question I ask is, would you like information on working with Lindsay in whatever the topic may be? Right. So like in the business case, I'm like, would you like information on learning how to build your Facebook group with Lindsay or learning how to build your community? And I'll get the, yes, I would. And now I have permission right out the gate to be like, hello, let's talk about this. So then I can support them and you can kind of move forward um, in reaching out and talking to them directly about your product or your business. So you can create a question around that. Um, and then the third question, like I said, I'm asking where they're coming from. You guys can think about like, where are you at in your hormone health journey or your skin journey or your, you know, the non-toxic journey? Like, are you new to this? Right? Like it's a really simple question. So as they request to join, you're like, okay, these guys are brand new. Where do I want to start with them? And it helps again, it's like a sorting feature. It's a feature that helps you grow your email list. Um, I don't have an automated um, like Zapier or something where it's like, they just automatically go on the email list. Um, but I'm looking into that. So I'll let you guys know if I find something, cause there can be a point where you can end up with 50 to hundred requests like that. Like they just start flowing and you're like, Oh my God, there's so many leads rolling in. So you want to be ready for that too. Um, right now I'm just putting them manually into an email list. So Okay, more conversation starters are going to be your questions and your polls that make sense for you to privately reach out. Remember when I was talking about the struggle with nutrition, something like that, like the struggle with sleep. This is a great poll that can lead to I'm running this event. I have this product. I have this business. So think creatively as this is my action step for this slide for you guys is to brainstorm topics to talk about um, that are hormone health, or again, like it's fun because we have so many different like products here to work with. So you, this, this can get really, um, fun and creative with how you want to approach your community. If you care very much about a very specific product and want to be very focused on that, go for it. If you want to like do a hormone health overall, if you want to talk more about reducing the toxic load, like you can see how these are very similar but different topics that allow you to get creative and share, but also ask questions to kind of learn where these guys are at. So when they join, I will drop them a welcome note. Welcome to the group. I'm so excited you're here. And I'll say the name of the group. I called mine hormone 
what do I call it? Holistic Hormone Harmony and Clean Living. It's kind of a long name for it, but we're rolling with it right now and maybe I'll change it. You always have ability to change everything you want to change, your cover photo, your name, the title of the group, your questions, like nothing set in stone. You can always go in and change things. If you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to talk about this. Just change it and they'll roll with it. And the people who don't want anything to do with what we're doing will happily leave the group. And guess what? You have just saved yourself more time because you're like, cool, they weren't interested moving along. So um, note that, oh my gosh, what was I telling you guys? Brainstorm topics. I was talking about changing anytime you want to change. Oh, so the reach out. So I will welcome them. Welcome to the um, hormone, holistic hormone harmony community. Are you brand new to hormone health and non-toxic products? Is this new to you? Like, where, how'd you find me or whatever you want to ask them, ask them, like, are you new to this type of subject? Is it something? And they'll, they'll, they, they, they potentially will ghost you, which is fine. Cause they're very busy. I just keep following up. Like I don't leave them until they are like, leave me alone. And I don't do it obnoxiously. I give them the space, but I'm also just like, Hey, I know you're busy. <laughs> like we all are. I just wanted to see if you caught that message. Um, like I just had this happen yesterday with a text note. I was like, I don't know if you got this message, but I need to get in get my hair done. <laughs> like, and they were like, Oh my gosh, I never got the message. So you know how people are, they open their messages, they drive, Cause they're, you know, they opened at the red light or the kids called them. Like, remember that and just creatively continue to follow up if they don't, but some will respond and be like, um, I'm very new to this. I'm starting to learn or they're going to be like, yeah, I've tried some things and I'm really interested. So what happens? You now have a great conversation started, right? And you can move them. I mean, we could dig deep into this about the products that would be the right start for them or whether we want to move them onto a sampler starter, like whatever that looks like, but really get creative as this action item says and brainstorm these topics that you can talk about. And if you feel blocked, chat GPT is always great for this because they will help you just get the creative juices flowing, going for a walk in the sunshine. I don't know if y'all have sunshine where you're at right now, but you will here in like two weeks. Um, and let yourself like get some creative ideas and then jot the notes in your phone. And then you can even schedule your posts on Facebook and that saves you time too. So as a twin mom, this was like such a game changer for me because I did not have a lot of capacity or time and I still managed to develop leaders. I still managed to create a lot of customers, build a really large team and doing all this because I had this solid system in place. And um, let me just remind you about your energetics while we're here. Uh, remember building engagement takes time. It takes patience. It takes consistent effort. Engagement is always going to require you to go first. Um, you bringing the energy and them matching it. So I don't want you to be the one who's like, I have this group. There's like 300 people and I haven't been in there in a week because they are going to go pay attention to somebody else. You want to make sure you show up, but do it in a um, way that feels really good to you. Like it doesn't have to be every single day, but if it is, post once a day, right? If it's a couple times a week, that's okay. If you want to schedule some things out, um, go for it. And I, I, um, I go around with the idea of a content plan, just so you know, like I, I have like, I know to go live. I know to use these features. Um, sometimes I just want to ask like a really simple question. Like, what are you doing this weekend? Sometimes I want to like really tell a business story. Um, but I don't like, I always call it, what do I call it? Like the loose plan. Cause I am not a good, like stick to, we're going to do this on Monday. We're going to do this on Tuesday. I'm just not that type of person. I'm very energetically, I like flow. And sometimes I want to talk about something else that I did not know I was going to talk about that day. It wasn't planned. So just, I always like to keep this very flowy and not too rigid because like you guys all have your things and your capacities. And so this is just like a baseline for you to really intentionally use these groups, if that makes sense. Um. Okay. And last but not least, let me give you a couple action steps. Cause I, I would not be Lindsay if I did not give you actual action. 
Go launch your group if you haven't already. Make sure your title is something that people would actually find you, okay? Um, I want you to grow your group. So tell people you have this group when you're making these posts, like join my group. I want people to know about your groups when you're connecting with people, even on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you're at. If you're in person connecting, because I know we're doing all kinds of different uh, business strategies here, like just move them in there because it's a nice streamlined space where they're going to hear your message on repeat, which is super important, right? Serve them with your content strategies that feel good to you. Um, there's a lot there. I know I gave you a lot to think about and to get creative with and then sell to them because that is what we're here to do. We're here to build a business and make some great sales and teach our people to do the same. Questions? That was a lot. I have a quick question. Hi. Yes. Sorry. This is Tammy. I'm a, we are in Washington, DC for a, my husband has a meeting. So I'm catching this on the fly, but I have a question. Um, do you always ask people before you invite them into the group? Um, do you ask their permission or do you just go through and invite people you think that would want to be there? I'll do both. So I, will sometimes I'll click on that invite button like it's a feature in the group and I'll just and now when I do that they're going to skip through questions they're never they're not going to see questions they're just going to like add themselves in so then I have to think like of creative ways to like get welcome them or because like they didn't intentionally want to come in that's just me like bringing them in so there's that and then the second thing is um, when I was told like, send all these messages, like do the cold thing where we're all like, Oh, um, I would instead talk to these people as I built these relationships. Um, and I would be like, Hey, I have a community. You should come join. And so, yes, I would do that. And then I just pop the link in the, in the little DM. I felt really good about inviting them to a free community because I knew I was going to add value and serve them. I wasn't just going to have this space where it was like, here's this product and here's this sale and this is happening and that's happening. Um, because that is where they're like, oh God, all they're doing is trying to sell to me. Right. And that's the thing that I want to like help support in this space because a lot of people hate groups because of that. They're, they're like, mm, get me away from these things. Like all I've done is sell, sold to. So both is the answer. Like really just some of this is like intuitive, like this feels good to just click invite to some of these guys. And some of it is, um, I just met this person on the gram or I met them on Facebook and I was in a different group and I was having a conversation on a thread. Cause that's like a way that people will find you is you're interacting, you're being social or you're doing it in person either way. Um, and it's just like, here's the link. And then they click to join and then they get the questions and then it grows. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. This has been great. I just feel like I'm not really sure how to get started. No, no, no. Um, okay. When you start a group, don't worry about albums. All you got to do is tell your story. That's all you got to do. That's how you start a group. So make sure you have a cover photo that looks nice. Um, make sure if you want your questions, have those ready. But overall, it's like, welcome to the community. I'm so excited you're here. A little bit about me. Um, and you can put a picture of yourself. And then you can be like, I'm going to go live on XYZ date at this time. And I'm going to tell you more about my story. Um, but I, I, will, I just started with like a picture of me and the family. And I was just like, you know, I'm a mom of twins. I live in Arizona. Um, and I talk a little bit about like why I'm here infertility, like whatever your personal story is and how you felt connected to this company and how excited you are. Um, start there and just have that welcome post. That's how you kick a group off. You don't have to have like, we don't have to have all the things in order. It's definitely something that builds out over time. You're welcome. Do you have any hormone health giveaways that you offer to get people at, um, email addresses? Um, so not yet, but we did, there was, and this is kind of 
it can be advanced, but I, I think it's still good to talk about is like, if you do want to create a little free guide and exchange for their email, you can have like a little guide of like how to start or how to like five ways to reduce the toxin load in your household, something very simple that will educate them, but and build that trust. Um, is what I personally will do. I have not done that quite yet. Right now, they're just willingly giving me their emails. Um, so yay to that. I basically wrote that I would be emailing tips in the in the little question um, piece. And so, but as yes, because we will expand cold. And so I'm I'm like in my third month. So I'm I'm personally in this space of where I'm not in cold market yet. I'm very much in warm and hot because I'm still working through a lot of those connections. And as I start to expand, it is on my mind to create something like that and then have them exchange for that because I love email marketing. Like I'm a big fan. Um, so yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else? Was this helpful? <laughs> I have one last question. Uh, what is your opinion about doing a group with multiple advocates, like other others, or is it best to have your own? What kind of group is it? Kind of similar to, I mean, like a hormone, you know, health, wellness, focused around human grace, but not about necessarily just selling, but information. Okay. Um, two thoughts on that. One, I actually studied a program and they were, it's very different from what I teach, but they, they actually would funnel their whole team to an informational space. So it was like this third party done for you space. So if that's what you're talking about, then yes. Um, but your own community, I would, I would hold tight for yourself just cause it can get a little messy when they're bringing their prospects in and you're you know, it, it could, it may not, but it could, that's really the only thing, um, where you're like, oh, like, you know, that's just a little messy. And, you know, I know that that's an easy fix at the same time. So it really is up to you. Um, I've definitely had team in the past where two of them would team up and they'd run a community together. But I want to just like, say we came from a space where, Oh my gosh, we were, in, we were encouraged to run like all these free things and like challenges and like clean eating this. And like, I went to a point at some point where I had like 10 different groups going because I don't know why. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> why are you doing this? I had like 50 people in these, all these different spaces. And I was like, you have always built one space. What are you doing? So I realized like, always run the events and the challenges within the group, within the community. Don't feel like you have to go create multiple different ones because you're going to drive yourself crazy. And we don't, we don't want that. Um, so hopefully that helps you too, because I know you guys are probably thinking about events and challenges and you may think like, oh, I need a fresh new group for this. Um, unless it's paid and they need to pay for this thing, then yeah, you probably want a separate group because the ones who don't pay shouldn't get the content. But um Otherwise, try and run it all in the same so that the whole, as you continue to grow your group to 100, 200 people, like all of them get to experience that um, because you never know. We never know when someone's ready to order. So I just want to add that. Um, oh, and the last thing I want to say is also, please don't stress about like, building your group to thousands and thousands of people. It's totally fine if you want to go for it, but don't stress about it. I, my largest, um, when I was like, we were growing and doing, I think we got to 550. So don't stress about 15,000, 20,000. Like that's something that I see out here in the, in the, in the social spaces. They're like, Oh, so many people. And I'm like, I mean, you can, but like, don't let it stress you either. Cause like 50 people, there's a lot of opportunity right there, you know? Yeah. Any other questions? I think this is great. I've loved having for the first time in 10 years, a group where it is just me and I'm not like 
hand holding everyone like because it's not that hard to run a group and you learn so much by having to do it yourself like you really can you can post your link you can really brand it around you you can not have to worry about being the leader and those people can go in and copy what you're doing if they need ideas and inspiration but like you're not like you're empowering them to go do this is something that's really simple and duplicatable whether you're new to Facebook or not new to Facebook, whether you have a big following, whether you don't have a big following, like, I feel like this is one of the pers- like, cause I spent 10 years letting everyone on my team in my groups at all time and thinking that at some point they would just naturally want to go run their own groups because I did. And that wasn't the case until I like had to literally force them out of the nest. So, um, I'm this time, I'm just taking the approach that they have to start in their, their own nest to begin with, you know, and I, I don't think one way is right or one way is wrong, but I am really liking this approach because it's really required people to like, go figure this out and, and kind of lead themselves from the beginning and, and really show them show up for their people as a leader from day one, like, and so those, those people are like, oh, she, you know, they're seeing them as the hormone health guide versus me, right? So it builds confidence in them and, and excitement. Yeah, right. it was oh, great. Oh, it was so cool. Like for whatever reason, years ago when I did this, I had, I was like, go like, no, no, no. I want you to create your own. And I think it was because in my mind, like everybody had a different approach they wanted to take. Like some wanted it to be all about nutrition. Some wanted it to be motivation. Some wanted it to be about fitness. They all had different, like one called it the fitness club and one called it motivation with so-and-so. Like those weren't very, looking back on it, I'm like, eh, that wasn't very like clear on what um, the group was about, but like it still did what it did and it allowed them to have a um, list, if you will, of people, a, a space um, a hub where, and, and allowed them to be the leader, which is what, you know, when I was figuring this all out, this system, and I was like, oh my gosh, like all my leaders were literally developed through this type of a system, um, who worked really closely with me. It was, it was cool, but yeah, that did come down to their own communities. They each had their own. Um, there was only a couple that would partner up and, you know, okay. <laughs> So any other questions? Okay. Yay. Thanks, Lens. This is so good. I'll stop the live stream. Sure thing. Thanks for having me.